What's the deal with animals in Equestria, dude? There's like horses and stuff. Oh, my things are horse things! Around here we call them pony things. Now, you can't fault me for using pony and horse interchangeably. Sunset here is treating it like it's almost a regional dialect thing. Like soda, pop, and coke. There's only one correct way to say that, by the way. So the ponies have become the dominant species, sure enough. That's evident. But what about the rest? There are so many questions left unanswered. Well, don't you worry, because today, not much is going to change. I still can't make heads or tails of all this zoological confusion. <laughs> We're primarily going to focus on creatures that are representative in the human world as well, so we have a frame of reference for what is or isn't sapient. For starters, bats, birds, mice, squirrels, beavers, frogs, and the like, they all seem to act as they would in the human world. Short of Fluttershy being able to communicate with them, but that's because she's the special one, not the animals themselves. Complex tasks appear to be out of reach. No elevated intelligence putting them on the same scale as ponies. Let's refer to these as Sentience Level 1. This is the idea that these animals have no difference between the non-equine world and the equestrian world in terms of consciousness. This level includes animals we'd regularly see as pets, such as dogs, cats, also farm animals, such as pigs and chickens. Let's jump to Sentience Level 4 for the sake of not getting too convoluted right away. This is the level we'll assign to the ponies. These are higher beings that have developed civilization. They are able to communicate advanced ideas and establish thriving societies built off of morality, laws, philosophy, and all that thinky mumbo jumbo that someone way more qualified than me knows a hell of a lot more about. The difference between good and bad, learning, improving, all the ingredients to be the top of the metaphorical food chain. These are the ponies themselves, yaks, donkeys, buffalo, and zebra. There is no question as to their sapience and therefore are categorized as the highest level of sentience for the purpose of whatever this is. Here is where things get confusing. I am no authority to dictate what constitutes fully evolved, highly intelligent beings. However, what I can determine easily is if animals can speak or not. So let's draw the line between verbal and non-verbal between levels 2 and 3. With level 2, we have animals that are capable of performing complicated tasks, understanding what is being spoken to them, but have not the ability to verbalize their thoughts. These species need a little more justification for their placement here. Right off the bat, raccoons. They wait tables in the episode Saddle Row Review, so I'd say that qualifies as higher level tasks, but they do not speak. Next, goats. Iron Will employs them for assisting him with his touring seminars. At least I hope they're employed, I'll be ringing up the Equestrian Department of Labor otherwise. No speaking, but are capable of fulfilling their job tasks. Finally, I'd argue owls, or at least Aloysius. It's not as if he's performing tasks that one would be unable to train an owl to do, which would land him in level 1. However, the fact that Twilight assigns him the job of retrieving a specific book with a title implies that he knows how to read. This bird also understands dramatic irony and comedic timing, so for those reasons I'll put them in level 2. The most unusual level of all is level 3. These are animals that are vocal, have complex thoughts, but are still, for whatever reason, subjugated as lesser beings by the ponies. There are very few species that belong here, but one of them are cows. Daisy Joe, are you talking? And yet you are relegated to a mere farm animal by the Apple family. Is there a need for a bovine equality movement in Equestria? Are we witnessing civil injustice before our very eyes? Who freaking knows? There's a cow farm. You're gonna find cows outside. The other species is sheep, also beholden to the whims of the Apple family. A flock of them are herded into pens by AJ and Applebloom. Shortly afterwards, one of the sheep literally speaks and says, You could have just asked. Clearly, they have the wherewithal to form completely coherent sentences and understand cause and effect, but they do not have the independence in society granted to other animals, like donkeys. The equestrian hierarchy may have some incredibly concerning undertones. But putting aside the potential ethics violations that may be present for creatures of sentience level 3, we can attempt to find a unifying characteristic between the domineering species. Scrutinizing the designs of these characters, we can see, perhaps, a similarity they all share. That being the eyes. 
Sentience level 4 characters are designed with these colorful irises, complete with eye reflection that seems to indicate a level of sapience above all the rest. This trait is prominent in almost all species in this category, see ponies, zebra, yak, donkeys, however, the key problem is in the word almost. When trying to break these sentience levels down, there are three big wild cards in increasing order of what the fuck. The first is the buffalo. Clearly sapient, their eyes are lacking the colorful irises that were just mentioned. So that's already one wrench in the system. The second huge conundrum we run into is this little bastard right here, Angel Bunny. Because of this one rabbit, I have no earthly idea where to put the species on the scale. On the one hand, they are usually non-vocal, but through the power of Zakora, Angel is given the ability to speak, and this dude has many thoughts. Coherent and rational thoughts, albeit from a spoiled little twerp, but it's now going against this entire made-up organization system, and there doesn't seem to be a good justification for putting rabbits in any of these categories. However, the final enigma which plagues me to this very day is the freaking giraffe. Clementine, to be specific. Those eyes have a soul behind them, as if she wants to lay all of her troubles bare in a verbose soliloquy and yet she cannot speak. She is treated merely as an animal, taking up residence in Fluttershy's sanctuary, and treated by a veterinarian. We are led to believe she is nothing more than a level 1 sentient creature, so why does she have those eyes? There are no words for how jumbled my neurons are at this very moment. My single brain cell cannot keep up with this madness. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I think my brain just committed suicide. At the end of all of this conjecture, I cannot scientifically link a commonality between sentience levels. There are four total. Ponies and the like sit at the top with their vast tracts of land and well-developed civilization. There are clear distinctions between the levels descending from the top, yet rabbits are given their own category. If Monty Python has taught me anything, this is necessary. They need to be separated and isolated for the safety of every other living being. Although if we travel even further beyond, into the depths of the deepest hole, we can find a sentience level zero. Beings of such low intelligence and moral fiber, we question whether or not they're even alive. How can a living organism reach such a threshold of abhorrent iniquity? It is here where even science has failed us in our understanding of the mechanics of the universe. For residing at this level is Sludge the Dragon, absolute fucking douchebag.